You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Hi, I'm Casper Mossman. I'm Communications and Marketing Director at QB3. QB3 is a University of California Research Institute and Biotech Accelerator. We help uh, people start biotech companies and uh, get them going in the first couple years of their existence. Well, it was founded in late 2000 by then Governor Gray Davis, um, who uh, created a legacy of four institutes. QB3 was one of them. We represent Berkeley, UCSF, and Santa Cruz. This was founded in, in 2013 after we had been working with biotech startups for then about maybe uh, <laughs> seven, eight years. And so this represents a lot of what we've learned has been incorporated in this building which now houses about 50 companies. It's a really, it's an intelligent, as intelligent a solution as we could come up with for what people need to get their companies going in the first few years. So the space can handle a, a bunch of different companies' needs, including chemistry. You can do a lot of molecular biology here. You can, if you wish, be um, a desk-only company or virtual-type company. And we have office space. We have core facilities. We have a staff scientist who can do experiments for you. Um, and it's, it's actually a very premier space. It's much more. But more important than almost anything is the fact that you can't see this, but we're only four blocks from UCSF Mission Bay. You don't want to be out in an industrial park at this stage of being a startup. You want to be next to all these massive facilities you can go in and use on an hourly basis. You want to, you could go to seminars. And, and secondly, you've got 50 companies here. People like and benefit from being around their peers when you're creating a startup. It has been a massive asset to be associated with UC. It's made things with the city very smooth. Um, launching this incubator was made much easier by our UC connection because it, we're basically a public-private partnership and uh, that opens a lot of doors. It, the, the private part allows you to bring in private investment. The public part just means that you're clearly developing it with a mission for public good. And people like both of, both of those elements. It's very common for most of our companies to be founded by graduate students or postdoctoral fellows who have no business background and they just have a vague feeling that they want to commercialize and no idea how to start a company. This, you know, over several years made it clear that we needed to provide them with um, programs to help them incorporate and get their company started on a sound footing. Um, other challenges include the perennial one of finding money of various types. So um, we have launched a grant writing workshop and also a venture fund. About um, six years ago we opened, launched our first venture fund and so you have um, non-dilutive funding in form of federal grants and then we also have the venture fund itself which provides training in how to pitch. In fact we um, people don't know how to pitch, they don't know how to sell their ideas and so we created a pitch workshop to teach people over the course of about eight weeks how to deliver an effective pitch. And then after the eighth session we have a, um, we call it QB3 Quick Pitch because you know you've got to come up with a name for it. Basically it's, it's like it's a pitch day. They, they show up in front of a big stage with you know we've got 250 people in the room and there's a real atmosphere to it and they come out bam, bam, bam and they each give their five minute pitches and it's very impressive. In the last year or so we have seen a decided trend towards um, genomics and personal microbiome companies. So we've had uh, very strong companies. These have been some of our strongest companies. First Ubiome, which is very strong, now at Y Combinator, um, and Whole Biome. Um, the idea is that you will sample and sequence your, the personal, the, the sort of, the God knows how many trillions of, of microbes that live on each of us 
and we carry around our own personal zoo and then to segment this and find out what the various types of microbes are. And many of these are, are symbiotic microbes. They, they benefit us, or at least they're partnered with our bodies. If you were to kill these things off, you would damage our own health. Um, and therefore, there's an idea to maybe tweak your microbiome to, uh, as a form of medicine. And, and some of these companies are very far along in doing that. I think when it comes to wearable tech, um, what you're, you're going to see in general is a move towards the intelligent precision medicine. And there's, there's got to be so much that has to be done to, first of all, collect this information and then get it to your doctor. It's such a big, wicked problem that it's, we don't have any startups tackling the major issues here, which is one of the biggest issues for medicine worldwide and particularly in the US, which is to collect that data and make it specific and get it to the people who can actually make decisions about your personal health. Well, we have, we kind of feel like we've explored this space. It's now mature. What we're doing is pretty mature. And the question is, can we scale it up? So we, we have almost passed the innovative phase of, of what we're doing. We're dealing with innovative people, but we've innovated as much as we can. The question is, can we replicate this? So you will see us replicating incubator and venture fund um, in various incarnations through the Bay Area and recently our director Reg Kelly was tapped as um, entrepreneurship advisor for Janet Napolitano who's president of UC. So we have been chosen or whatever you like to say to, to expand this or scale it to different UC campuses. So you will see similar enterprises. They will be integrated with whatever is happening on those campuses because Every, it depends very much on location and what you've already got going.